Two things. First, often the main criticism against using sandbags to build muscle is that because the smaller muscles wear out first, the big prime mover muscles never get close enough to failure to grow. Is that true? Second, there's often dead space near the end of a sandbag workout. You've done the main movements, you're physically and mentally worn out, but you want to push just one last time before calling it quits for the day. What could you do to fill that space? The sandbag to shoulder would be too technical, the carry would take too much mental willpower, even a lift from the ground seems like it'd probably be a bit too much because that bent over position is tough to maintain. If only there were an exercise that could work here, for one final hurrah before ending your workout. I found that exercise. The answer to both of these things is found in the sandbag box squat. Anyone familiar with powerlifting specific strength training has probably heard of the box squat. Usually done with some kind of barbell, it was made popular, or at the very least made known to me by the West Side Barbell guys who used it as one of their primary accessory exercises for both max effort and dynamic effort work. It's a very simple exercise, set up some kind of box that sits roughly 10 to 20 inches from the ground, uh, just low enough so you reach all the way or close to parallel when you squat down, parallel being the point when your thighs are parallel parallel with the ground. Stand in front of the box, squat down until you're resting on it, pause long enough for all momentum to go away, and stand back up. Anything sturdy can work as a box, an actual plyometric box, a bench, or my favorite, a sandbag. Depending on the size of the sandbag, you can place it on the ground either standing upright or lying on its side, or you can use both for some extra variation. There's no denying the power of the barbell box squat. It makes you bigger and stronger, and is honestly a lot more fun than a standard squat, in my opinion at least. But barbells aren't why you're here. Let's get on with the sandbag stuff. Before addressing the two points brought up at the start of the video, I need to mention strength. The sandbag box squat will make you better at lifting sandbags. If you have trouble involving your legs during any of the main movements, and most people do, myself included, it will help. Just as the sandbag row teaches you leg drive from the floor, the box squat teaches leg drive when lifting from the lap, and will make you instantly more powerful. Or rather, it will help you tap into power you already had but weren't using, which can mean massive increases in performance seemingly overnight. Given time, it will grant you new power as well. Back to those initial thoughts. First, there's the idea that sandbags don't build muscle because when lifting them, the small muscles wear out too quickly and prevent the large prime mover muscles from receiving an adequate stimulus for growth. While I don't actually agree with this at all, for the sake of argument, let's assume it's true. The problem of muscular failure can be corrected with the sandbag box squat. Breaking up the concentric and eccentric chain means you get a chance to rest in the middle of every rep. This brief rest is enough to recover any grip and arm strength, or squeezing bear hug strength, or any special type of strength you may need to do another rep. It's not so much rest though, that the big prime mover muscles become fully recovered. The box squat in a way turns into one giant rest pause set. The smaller muscles stay right on the very edge of failure at all times, and the large back and leg muscles move closer to failure with every rep, eventually making it very close. Saying that out loud, it seems like the small muscles would still give out first, but try it yourself and you'll see you can make it pretty much all the way to failure everywhere with this exercise. The secret lies in that rest time between reps, which leads me to the second part of the video, looking for a good final exercise and a sandbag workout. When doing a barbell box squat, you're always under tension. With a bar on your back, you have no choice but to maintain core rigidity whether you're standing in the process of squatting up or down or resting on the box. This is really a problem with pretty much all sandbag exercises too. You're always under tension. And I say problem lightly because the constant tension is actually one of the things that makes lifting sandbags so effective. But for our argument here, when trying to push as close to failure and fatigue resistant muscles as you can get, constant tension on parts of the body unrelated to those muscles could be seen as a problem. With a sandbag box squat, you don't have that issue. You could rest in that bottom position with a sandbag on your lap all day if you wanted to. It's a complete rest, a safe rest in which you don't need to worry about getting injured for relaxing. It's also a very technically easy exercise, which means you can do it at a high level even when you're both physically and mentally fatigued. It's the perfect final exercise. One all-out set of max reps is all you'll need. Pick up your sandbag, hold it in either a vertical or horizontal position, and get to work. 
Initially, you'll want to try for perfect form, maintaining a vertical torso angle and resisting the temptation to rock your way off the box. As you fatigue, however, you can think of these things as a type of mechanical drop set. Once you can't do any more perfect reps, rest a while and try to do a few more. Once that's maxed out, let your body do what it wants to and bend forward more as you stand up, allowing the back to become more involved, similar to how someone might do a squat morning with a barbell. Keep this within reason, of course. Always try to keep your back straight and only lift after taking in a full breath of air and bracing as if you were preparing for a punch to the gut, but a bit of extra forward lean will let you push further and for longer. When that gets to be too much, use momentum to rock yourself off the box. You do this by briefly rocking backwards, then forward at the start of every rep. Eventually move on to rocking yourself from that box so fast that you propel yourself up with something very close to pure momentum. You could never manage this with a heavy weight on your back, but with a sandbag on your lap, it just works. Keep going as long as you can, and by the time you can't, you'll be completely content knowing you did everything you could, and that your muscles are primed and ready for some good rest and recovery.